Welcome to me and Mrs. Wizard's 20th anniversary. That's right, let's get started. And also welcome to Mrs. Wizard's 20th anniversary gift, a baby kitten. Just like this Mustang behind us is a 20th anniversary edition, me and Mrs. Wizard are also now a 20th anniversary edition. It's been a few years. It doesn't seem that long. No, no, it really, really doesn't. And this is Daisy, your new little baby. I know, everyone's asking, what is she gonna do now that she's retired? I had a baby. She's just got four legs and fur. Yep, it's very cute. She is so adorable. And it wasn't cheap either. <laughs> But neither was your gift either, really. No, that's true. Let's put little Daisy away so we can check out the other really cool thing in this video. I think your 20th anniversary gift is a little larger than mine. Well, this one doesn't require a litter box. That is true. It just does visits the gas station a little bit. Yes, it does. Yeah. So how have we made it 20 years? Probably because we're both genuinely invested in each other's future, interested in each other's success. That's probably true, even though it's kind of changed over time. I can tell you, we fight occasionally. We don't always, it's not perfect, but yeah. we work through it. We're also in the generation of probably the first groups of people that met online. Probably, yeah, we actually did. We met on AOL. America Online, you got yeah. mail. Yeah. We did that a few times back and forth. You got mail and messenger. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. yeah. Do we, and our anniversary is actually today. But we actually celebrated a little bit earlier. We are wearing our vacation garb today. We took a trip to Grand Canyon, Antelope Canyon, Sedona. It was beautiful. I it want to move great. there. I don't know about moving there. But as a photographer, it was a dream vacation. It's beautiful, beautiful scenery for sure. But thinking of things that are beautiful, let's check out this really sweet Infinity. This is a 2007 Infinity G35 Coupe. It is the last year of the G35. After this year, they went to the G37. And a lot of changes happened that really doesn't even look that much the same anymore compared to what you're looking at right now. It's similar, but not exact. I've always wanted a fun little zippy car that's also somewhat decent on gas. An IROC Z Camaro is awesome, but it's not good on gas. This thing is pretty fast, actually 280 horsepower roughly. It's fairly zippy, it actually really is. And also on the highway it can get 28 miles per gallon. It's really not too bad. And it's a two door, which means I can get in and out of it easy. And since our kids are adults, we really don't need to be hauling them around anymore, even though this one really doesn't have much of a back seat. And Mrs. Wizard will show you that here in a little bit when she gives you a tour. This actually comes from Euroasian Bob. I was looking at some uh, 350Zs, I was looking at Supras, I was looking at all kinds of things, but I really was not interested in spending $40,000. I saw some Supras that were like, I was like, no. No, I'm not spending that on an old Japanese car. I'm not. So that was out the window. I'm not doing that. So I actually did a trade with EuroAsian Bob on this G35. Really? What did you trade this time? The FJ. The FJ. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that one. You guys remember we actually purchased a 2010 black FJ Cruiser, and we had it for quite a while. We thought it would be wonderful. We always wanted one. They look so cool. But the reality is, is the one that I bought came from the factory was like lifted. It wasn't an aftermarket lift. It was pretty high. And I thought I could probably get used to it or do something. And it was just the way my hip sockets are, they're not doing so well anymore. And I'd have to tip up on them and try to get into the car. He's getting old. Yes, I'm getting old. Working on cars has worn me down. Actually, I found something I didn't like because obviously we're about the same height. Every time we would hop in, you would bang your knee right there, <laughs> the, the, the little funny bone spot. Yeah. Every time you'd get into that car, every single time, unless you got really careful, but then it was like trying to, you know, it was awkward. Definitely was kind of awkward. Also, I tried to lower it. I tried to put stock suspension on different models, tried to bring it down a little bit, and it never would be even or would be off kilter. I finally put it back the way it was and said, it's just not gonna work. And it had a really strange blind spot. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing we drove usually together because, yeah, you could not see in certain spots in that car, yeah. You look this way or that way, 
You really can't see anything. Couldn't see anything. And there, it was old enough it didn't have the fancy technology to go, you know, beeping at you and everything else. Yeah. The other thing that was really weird is it had a black interior, which was pretty. It, did, it hid all sorts of marks and, you know, dust. But if you dropped something with the roof that went way out to here, it was gone. It was like this black abyss of nothingness. So drop your sunglasses. Mm, maybe we'll find you someday, buddy. But it was a good vehicle, it was reliable, it never broke down, it never had any issues. There's nothing wrong with it as far as mechanical. It just wasn't functional for what we wanted it to be. Right. So I gave him the FJ and I didn't only just get this car, I also got a check for some cash on top. Whoa, you actually got a head on a vehicle? Yes. Whoa, this is amazing, guys. It's a rarity. Yeah. I got this plus cash, so I can't complain. I, I won't complain either. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. So here's the front of this nice G35. You can see that Blackbeard license plate that I've had on my Charger and various other vehicles. No, it's not an evil symbol. It's actually Blackbeard the Pirate's actual flag. You are half pirate with your beard. Yeah, I'm a red beard pirate. This one's in really good shape. One thing I found when looking at these is that there's not many left anymore that are stock and presentable, at least look decent. This one's very nice compared to some of the others I saw for sale. You can see the paint has some chips here or there. There's some fade spots. It's not perfect, but it's also not bad. As we come around to the back, you can see it has stock exhaust, which I will be leaving it that way. And it has the stock wheels and pretty much everything on here is stock. And that's why I was really after this from EuroAsian Bob. Let's hop under the hood. This headlight's a little faded, but I've got one of the kits that I can clean it with. I'll get them buffed out and it's to the point where I can still save it. It's, it'll be very clear and clean and nice when I get done with it. Here's our VQ35DE. This is not the rev up engine. This is just the plain old 3.5, nothing fancy. It is in really good shape. No check engine lights, no errors. Eurasian Bob actually had new valve covers put on it before he sold it to me to solve an oil leak. But otherwise, I told him not to fix anything else. I want it as is. Other than that, it is just the way he got it. One thing that's missing you can see here is the windshield washer fluid cap is missing. I can see that somebody has put new radiator hoses on it at some point in the past. You can actually see a bolt sticking up right here. Yeah, it's not tight. I can just undo it. Somebody put it in and just didn't seat it. Luckily, its friend there is, seems to be nicely, you know, pressed down. Yeah, well, that's easy to fix. One thing that's in the insulating pad on the hood is it says advanced front midship. The platform that this is built on, which is the advanced front midship, is also used with the 350Z and several other vehicles that Infiniti makes as well. It's where the engine doesn't hang out so far in front of the front wheels. It's almost in line with the center of the front wheels. Not exactly, but very close. That helps to keep the weight distributed between all four wheels. It's more balanced, and these handle really, really well because of that. So that's what that means that's on the insulating pad. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior and see what we got inside of there. Okay, ladies and gents, to get that gauge cluster to turn on, we actually had to turn the key into accessory mode. 128,917 miles. And look at all that glowing orange. And again, those lights over there on that left-hand side are just proving that they illuminate. They are not actually on. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Save the batteries because uh, we drove this here and I want to be able to make it home. As we look at the dash, everything is looking quite nice. Wizard found a hidey spot for his sunglasses. But, ooh, there we go. We found one of our first little boo-boos of this car. It got a little bit of a crack going on, but Wizard has something in the mail that is supposed to cover that up and hide that because apparently this is a very common problem on this car. As we move down, you'll see that we have taupe, taupe, and ivory-ish kind, but we've got one of our first hidey holes here with a USB cable in it. We've got a second hidey hole, obviously, the glove box, so nothing crazy there, but this one is really cool and unique. As we move over, we have another hidey hole. This one is fabulous for cell phones, nice and deep and won't go flying when we go around a corner. So lovely spot in there. Simple controls for the stock radio. Our next hidey hole, there we go. Ashtray and cigarette lighter. And again, I told you there's a lot of hidey holes in here. 
Got a lovely spot for our drinks. And then one more in the center console. And this one's kind of interesting. It's a manual. You can slide and adjust where that baby goes. But again, has a nice little cigarette lighter in the center console for more charging as well. We do have lovely leather seats that are heated on both sides. Got a little bit of bolster on them, nothing crazy. I do love how they have the controls for the power seats. It's here for the passenger and it is here for the driver. One thing I do notice with all this plastic there, it does encroach into the seat and you can actually kind of feel that on your hip when you are in the seat. So that is, don't know if I like this or not. I like that I don't, I can see what I'm doing. I don't like that I have to feel it when I'm sitting in the seat. Door card is plastic plastic with a little bit of accents of silver and a little leather section that is that perforated design back there as well. It does have another little notch there for a cup to set, which is nice because the one between the seats is rather narrow. This is a four-seater, so it does not have anybody sitting on the hump, but they do have a lovely little spot there to store your things. And I imagine, yes, a nice little cup holder as well. Headliner's in good shape. Everything's looking good. Yes, ladies and gents, the wizard has joined the 21st century. He actually has a steering wheel now that has controls on the arms. I know he's quite impressed that he can control radio, sound, you know, volume, stations, cruise control, all on a steering wheel and not on stocks on the side. One thing we do note is that the steering wheel is a bit rough. So that is one of the things he may need to be addressing. Might have to find a different steering wheel because this is a little crusty. Other than that, I think this is a pretty good purchase for him. I do like it. It is kind of comfortable. It is fun to drive. So let's see what this looks like on the underneath. See if he actually did get a good trade. Wizard, what was all that beeping going on when you sat in the car? I don't know, it's actually a question I have for you guys. If I have the key in my pocket, or outside the car, I should say, I can open and close the door. No noise. But if the key is inside, let's just say I just set into the car, I'm getting ready to go to drive around. I open the door, close it. Why would it be informing me that I left my key in the car? I just got into the car. I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. I'm going to have to research that and figure it out. It's kind of annoying. But it does it every single time without fail. And usually I'm sitting in the seat, so it's not some kind of a seat sensor or alarm or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of it, but maybe you guys know off the top of your head what it is. And some kind of a setting or something maybe. But like I mentioned, I did some searching and every time I would find one of these for sale, they were rough, they were destroyed. The exhaust has been cut off, it's got ugly, nasty wheels on it, the paint is all gone, the seats are shredded. I finally found one with EuroAsian Bob that wasn't destroyed, it was mostly stock. It's really tough to find a nice one of these anymore. Now it does have some small flaws, but I kind of had to just like Yes, it has a cracked dash, it has some faded paint, but you can't really get much better than this. They're just so hard to find. The engine that's in this car definitely doesn't win it any praise, especially from my employees, the technicians that work here, Daniel Sun and also Grimes. So when I actually drove this into the shop, Grimes said, oh cool, what customer dropped that off? I said, actually, it's not a customer's, it's mine, I just bought it. And his jaw dropped and he was like, and he said one word, gross, and walked off. And Daniel Sen was like, yeah, you know, the people that get these cars, they hack the exhaust off, it sounds like trumpets, it's, it sounds so bad, the VQ noises is what he called it, VQ. I'm not going to be doing any of those things. I'm not going to be vaping in my car, I'm not gonna be doing burnouts or sideshows or anything like that. I really do like these cars. I remember when they came out, and I've always wanted one, and. Here, I finally got one. So let's take a look underneath this thing. What does it look like? I don't even know. I haven't even looked yet. I haven't even had time. So together, we'll see what I got. So you might be wondering, why didn't you get a Toyota car, Wizard? You're always preaching about Toyotas. Well, I can fix anything on here myself for very cheap, so I'm not too concerned about that. 
and like I said, the Supras are crazy expensive. There really wasn't anything that really gravitated towards the Toyota made like I do to this vehicle. So let's see what I got. You can see it's been scraped right here on the bumper. Some parking lot stalls or something. Nothing too serious there. I see right off the bat a small oil leak going on on the cross member. It looks like the lower oil pan might be leaking, but that's an easy fix. It's literally just right there. And usually from the factory on these, they just use silicone. Let's check this wheel. Brakes are good. The little torn boot there, but... Ooh, he's a little slimy. Yeah, that's not too big of a deal. The sway bar links are good, but I've been hearing a little bit of clunking. Oh, there it is. These bushings are bad. The sway bar bushings themselves are clunking around. Again, that's not too big of a deal. Struts look fine. I don't see anything going on there. Oh, he's got a twin of gross slimy stuff here. Yep, just a crack from age. Nothing loose on the link, but the bushing is loose. Dry strut, everything's nice and tight there. Here's our transmission. I'm very happy to see that it's dry. These should be hung up here. They shouldn't be dangling. Someone could catch that. I'll probably get me a zip tie and tie that out of the way. The thing you have to remember on the, any older car, other people have worked on it. Sometimes they do a really good job, sometimes they don't. And sometimes you have to go behind somebody else's work and kind of tidy it up a little bit, which isn't too big of a deal. So here we have dual exhaust coming off the engine into a Y pipe and it goes into single. And it goes to this little resonator chamber here. Nissan Calsonic, it says. And it stays single exhaust all the way to the rear muffler. And then it has dual outlets there. Actually a very good sounding setup. I'm not going to be changing or altering it. It sounds, even from the factory, it sounds very nice. That U-joint's good. That U-joint's good. That carrier bearing and bushing is nice. And that U-joint is good. The differential is nice and dry. Check out these wheels. They're spider webs, Mrs. Wizard. Yeah, definitely not my favorite. The shock is not leaking. The brakes are fairly new. One thing I want to mention is that this is a rear wheel drive car. It's another thing that I really like about this vehicle. There's a lot of other vehicles that are out there that were appealing to me, but they were front wheel drive. This one's rear. I really like the fact that it's rear. Move all these spider webs out of the way. Hopefully one doesn't bite me. That would suck on our anniversary. Mm -hmm. Sway bar links are good. Bushings are good. Same over here. Nothing's leaking. Everything looks good. No serious issues under here. This has fairly new tires all the way around. You can see here it's the 48th week of 2020. Whoa, and they're Continentals. We actually got a car we don't have to put tires on? Yes, these tires are good. They do very good. They're quiet. They don't shake. They got a lot of life left in them. One thing that I see I really don't like, and I always take these off and throw them in the trash, is the security lug nut. I do not have the socket for that. Just like every time you buy a used car, you always ask, where's the security socket? And the seller says, I don't know. It's lost. We'll check the trunk before we're done here, just to make sure it's not back there. But I... I have a feeling that it's not. I do see the reasoning behind having those security lug nuts so your wheels don't get stolen. But at the same time, it never fails that you have a flat, you're on your way to work, you're running late already. You really need to get the spare on and you're stuck. You can't do nothing because you can't find the socket. I don't like that, it really pisses me off. So those are coming off. Let's get this thing on the ground. One cool thing about these is the button to open the trunk is actually part of your taillight assembly. It's a button right here. There we go. Oh, there's the owner's manual, Mrs. Wizard. Wow, you did hit the jackpot. Oh, wow. It's the original window sticker. Let's set this here so you guys can look at it. 2007 G35 Coupe. It was brand new, $36,440. Really not super expensive, even back then. That's not terrible. We can see that when it was new, it was purchased in Cornelius, North Carolina. 
there at Lake Norman Infinity. Maybe some of you guys drive by this place every day, who knows. But we're here looking for the security socket, so let's put this away and see if we can dive in and find it. Looks like over here is our... So I can see there's the toe hook, or the toe eye. You can see the jack, the lug nut wrench. I don't see anything anywhere with a security socket. I don't see anything. So the trunk is very clean back here. It's so clean, in fact, that they cleaned out the security socket for the lug nut. So that's kind of a bummer. That's kind of what I figured as well. It always happens that way. Okay, wizard. So if you don't have the security key, how do you get the wheel off? I have special sockets that fit on the outside. It will pull it off, but you typically throw them away. If you're going to use security sockets, you'll get a new set with a new key and replace them. However, I will be replacing them with standard lug nuts. So we've got some great links in the description below. Make sure to check those out. Definitely wanted to show you the really cool G35 and the fact that it has been 20 years since me and Mrs. Wizard's been married and also her little kitten that she got. Daisy is super cute, but I need to steal this guy. We have a dinner to go to. Thanks for watching.